Welcome to Tele Lakai, a television magazine about entertainment, health, news, Caribbean cuisine, and the hottest Haitian artists. Tele Lakai shares with you the talents of our Haitian brothers and sisters, and we feature the intimate lives of Haitian writers, singers, actors, sport figures, and entrepreneurs. Tele Lakai. My guest this evening is Ms. Evelyn Alexi, Associate Professor of Africana Studies and Comparative American Studies at Oberlin College and Conservatory. She is also the author of the book, Haiti Fights Back, The Life and Legacy of Shalmai Peralt, which is the first U.S. scholarly examination of the politician and Kako leader, also guerrilla fighter, who fought against the U.S. military occupation of Haiti which lasted close to two decades, from 1915 to 1934. Let's please welcome to Telilakai, professor and author, Evelyn Alexi. <laughs> professor Evelyn Alexi, welcome to Telilakai. It's a pleasure to have you. Oh, merci, Ampil. It's a pleasure to be here. Such an honor. <laughs> Before we begin, uh, Professor Alexi, could you please tell our audience a little bit about you? Who is Professor Evelyn Alexi? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm from New York, <laughs> from Brooklyn, <laughs> New York, and just grew up with a strong Haitian family on both sides. For me, Nicola, for me, Alexi, really instilled Haitian pride um, very firmly in me in terms of community. And so, yeah, so that's where I come from. And then ultimately, I went to school and was trained as a historian, as someone who studies the past. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, were you born in Haiti or you were born in the States? Okay, in my heart and in my head, but I don't know. In the States. <laughs> You're in the States. Yeah. You know, Professor Alex, see your book, uh, Haiti Fights Back, uh, The Life and Legacy of uh, Shalmai Piral. It's quite interesting. How long did it take for you to write this book? Yeah, it's, a, it's such a beautiful question to ask, too. I think it took me about a decade in terms of collecting the stories, letting it marinate and sitting with the multiple meanings of the sources that I was collecting, of course, translating some of my sources, the living archives, the oral stories that I did in IT Avekitazinia as well. And then just in between finishing school and launching my career as a junior faculty member at the time, it took about a decade. Yeah. That's, that's quite a bit of time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Before we start, our, so that we can start our conversation, our viewers and also so that our, our viewers can better understand who was Shalmai Piralt, uh, could you please explain to them why did the United States occupy Haiti from 1915 mm -hmm. to 1934? Yeah, yep. You know, it's interesting because I'm one of those thinkers who always think like, okay, what are the stated reasons that they give us? And then always what's underneath, what's under explored, mm -hmm. under studied, right? And so, of course, some of the obvious reasons is that IET has the Moe St. Nicolas, which is like the strategic access point that uh, faces the Atlantic Ocean and gives the United States access to the broader Caribbean, the broader Americas, when we think about uh, Panama as Nicaragua. Also, what's stated in the archives is this idea that Germany had begun to have too much influence in Haiti as well. And you sort of see the United States and Germany locking heads about that. And then the most obvious reason that they would say, too, is that Haiti's political instability of having a relatively um, large number of presidents within a short time period in that 1908 to 1915, that political instability bothered um, the United States officials. And that's one of the reasons as to why they wanted to occupy Haiti. But even when you look at the archives, President, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson at the time in this document that I found, he admitted to 
illegality. He was like, we don't have the right to come into Haiti, but let's just grab the bull by its horns and restore order. And despite the fact that Vidwan Guillaume Sam, as we know, had been assassinated um, mm. in 1915, in less than 24 hours, U.S. troops, 330 of them, arrived on July 28 to different um, parts and ports of Haiti. And so what I found, I was just like, there's something interesting about this moment, but that when you look backwards, it has its roots. It has its roots um, in looking at Haiti as really establishing itself as a sovereign nation in 1804 and saying that we're going to be a black nation, beautifully declaring that we're proud and we're black, um, really discredits the racial theories of that era to say also that slavery is banned. So I think if we think about that invasion moment that happens in July of 1915, we have to go backwards to looking at Haiti's success um, in the international arena in terms of establishing itself amongst France, amongst the United States, participating in the Age of Revolution, but also boldly declaring what does Black pride, what does Black culture look like specifically. And so it goes back all the way into that 1800s period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was Charles Mike Perrault? <laughs> and what, what was it really that pushed him uh, to fight uh, the U.S. military? Was it only because of, uh, of uh, the U.S. occupation? Is there more to the story? Right. Yeah, definitely. You sort of see Charlemagne Pidat himself. He's born in 1885, right? So if we even think about that century and the sentiment of the revolution still being alive, right? So he's decades removed from this revolutionary period, born from General Vimy Pidat as well as Masena Pidat, who's his mother, and he's so close to her. And although he is her only biological son, his brothers are going to join him in this Kako struggle as well. So here's this man who luckily his family sacrificed and was able to send him to St. Louis Gonzague. So he's formally educated and uses like that early 1900s landscape to ascend to political power. And at the time of uh, the U.S. invasion of Haiti, he actually holds a post in Le Wogan. So he's this very um, informed as well as very connected politician from that time period. And it's also, you sort of see in terms of just like that access that gives him to the people of Haiti, to the citizens of Haiti, not only in terms of representing them, but also representing the nation. And one of the things that always sticks out with Shalman Pidat when you're hearing um, from him in terms of like his letters, in terms of his proclamations, he's always reflecting on people like Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Toussaint Liberty, avec um, Alexandre Pétion. So there's this infused um, mentality in him that we inherited this revolution from our people, from our ancestors. And so it is our duty to protect Haiti, to defend Haiti. Um, and again, it ties us to that historical memory of this revolution. So when he starts to resist the invasion as early as 1915, immediately when they step foot onto the, onto the nation itself, he's thinking about that historical memory and using it to say, listen, you can't spread your eagle wings on Haiti, etc. Leave, leave peacefully um, before he assumes power as um, one of the leaders of the largest group of people known as the Kakos, who were the guerrilla fighters mm -hmm. at the time. See, you're 